Hey brothers and sisters, how are you? This is Francis Santa Rose just coming on to do a short video. I always say I'm going to do a short video and and once I get going, I get going. But that's how the Holy Spirit works, you know. You uh you got to move with the Holy Spirit when the if the Holy Spirit don't move, move the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um well, I've been inconsistent with my videos, but it's not because I haven't been in my word, actually the contrary is is more uh, true, that I've really been um, entering in and um, drawing near, uh, but my father keeps telling me to feed his sheep, feed his sheep. It's time to go, but it's not going to be today or tomorrow, and as long as we've got a couple more days and when I say we have a couple more days, uh, we're not, I'm not, we're definitely not looking at months. We're, we're within a, we're, it's going to be near. It's going to be close. It's, <clears throat> it's soon guys. So get your hearts ready. But until then, um, this is what I've been feeling. Uh, the Lord's really been working with me. You know, I, I kind of asked him, I said, what, what was with all the, um, authority and the, um, what was the word? The domination. And this is what I heard the Lord telling me. He says, as the time draws near, the enemy is on the rampage. He knows his time is short. And like a cornered animal, he's become rabid. And he's out there wreaking so much havoc. He said, I want my children to have all their weapons, to know everything that's at their disposal so they can fend off and defend him so I can work miracles through them. He wants to punish the enemy. He wants him punished. You know, he showed it to me like this. This is the, this is what I saw. I saw, it, it, he said, he said, if you had a little four-year-old child and your four-year-old child did something extremely disobedient, but you found out it was because the 12-year-old neighbor hit kid coerced him into doing it, who would you be mad at? Your four-year-old who doesn't know any better? Yeah, he does know. He, you know, by now he knows right and wrong, and and you've told him not to do that thing. But how easy is it to lure a four-year-old into doing something wrong by somebody who's older and more savvy? He said that's what the that's what it's like for me and and the devil and you guys. He said I understand that you're mere flesh. I understand that you're easily tempted. Yeah, I'm not happy when you go off and do things like that. He goes, but I understand who's to blame. And I want to punish the one who's responsible. He said, it's my desire that my kids get led to salvation. I know who's behind all this. I know. And I thought that was really cool. So he's been working on me and I've been working on a, on a, a study. I've been working on a lesson that's it's going to blow you guys away. I want to do it tomorrow. I want to do it tomorrow. He's He, he didn't release me to do it today because there's some more work I got to do on it. He's still dealing with me about it. It's actually something that I used to teach a long time ago, but he's showing me new stuff. He's giving me new stuff. Uh, I just, just now I thought it was done. I mean, I finished it. I finished it last night. I finished it. I finished it. It was done. You know, I, 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 it, it was this old lesson and I pulled it up and I worked through it and I, and I, you know, cause I used to teach it 10 years ago and I worked all the way through it and and made all these you know like updated it you know things have happened in my life since then I've used the hand I'm not gonna give it away I've used this principle and it's awesome I mean it's a weapon I I, I can't believe um, that I waited so long to teach it and it's not that I forgot about it I just like I just wasn't moved by the Holy Spirit because because authority had to be taught first. Uh, all those things had to be taught first. Oh yeah, see, this weapon, this tool, this weapon, you know, God gives us weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. This weapon is like a bazooka, you know? And, and and all the other stuff that we had was like a like a BB gun, you know? So this thing is powerful. 
but we had to get to a level of maturity to use it. So what he showed me was that all the other lessons up to now were maturing us. And one of the one of the really big lessons that we got to get is to understand to understand love and to understand how our father looks at people so that we are looking at people the same way like they're not our enemy there are brothers and sisters who are in bondage who are who are confused and confounded and you know it's like if you had let's say you grew up with a a, a sister and she was a couple of years younger than you but she was sweet and she adored you and you know you were her hero you know your her big sister or big brother you were the hero and uh, maybe you go off to college or something and she hooks up with some bad people and she gets strung out on drugs you and she's making stupid choices and and maybe she even comes to visit you and steals money from you you're not mad at her your heart is wrenched it's it's saddened because you you see what's happened to her you see what these people have done to her that's not her you remember what a kind and wonderful and sweet and 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 how she loved you and how she adored you and how she looked up to you and and respected you and admired you and and now you see what she's become and you know what who she really is this is not her this is what the drugs and that lifestyle has done to her well it's like that with our father see he loves us he adores us and he wants us to look at people the way he sees them they're just they're just messed up by an enemy so we're to have pity on people. So before I bring this lesson, um, I had to teach on all this stuff so that we have a heart of compassion like our Father. You know, um, it's just really important that we're compassionate with people. I want you to start looking at people through different glasses. I want you to start looking at people like your Father sees people. I want you to start pitying them because they know not what they do. There are people, there are people who have chosen to do evil. They know they're doing evil and they're doing it on purpose. There's people out there like that. There are. You know, there, there, were, there were people that Jesus looked at and he called them broods of vipers. He said, you brood of vipers, you know. Um, there was a time just before the cross, you know, when Jesus, he actually went out and picked a fight with the Pharisees. He picked a fight with them. He picked a fight with them. Read it. He, he, he lashes out at them. He, he calls them out by their own name. He threw a lot of shade at those people, a lot of shade, because they were evil to the core. How do you see all those miracles? How do you see it all? How do you how do you watch a leper with a stump and, and watch his hand grow back and not believe? Hmm? You gotta be evil. But see, most of the people aren't like that. Most of the people are not like that. Most of the people are just just deceived. They're like, you know, when Jesus was standing there preaching to the five thousand and he and he fed them and he did all the miracles, and you know the he fed them with the the, the two-piece fish dinner from Long John Silver. <laughs> and, you know, he probably looked out at all those people. You know, when he, you know, remember the disciples came and they said, you know, send them away so they can go get something to eat before it's too late. And he said, oh, oh man, you know his heart moved. He was, he was like, no, let's feed them. Let's feed them. He, see, he fed their spirit with his words and he fed their tummies too. And then he took care of them with the healing. You know, he provided a full service ministry. He did. He did. He, he, he entertained them. He healed them. He fed them. Oh my gosh, they had to love Jesus. You know, they just had to love him. They just had to love him. Oh my gosh. How could you have hated Jesus? How could, how evil would you have to be to hate Jesus? See, they hated him because he was taking their notoriety. He was taking their fame. How dare he step up there and, and mess up a good thing they had going. They had the best seats in the house. They had everybody's adoration. 
and he's stealing it all. He called. He called them out. He he, he told them who their father was. Their father is Satan. You know, it's interesting. You know, people talk about how um, well they're all just children of God. That's not what Jesus said. He said, I know your father, he was a liar. He's a liar from the beginning and you're just like him. He didn't say God, the Lord thy God in heaven was our father. He called Satan their father. Interesting. Pretty interesting. You know, the Bible says that Adonai bestows favor and honor. He bestows favor and and honor. You know, I, I told you about that verse that God showed me in Psalm 103 after my place got broken into and robbed and they took everything and they took my Kirby vacuum. <laughs> my wife used to mock me out. I was more upset about my Kirby vacuum being stolen than I was about all my computers and my printers and, and all my electronics <laughs> being stolen even though I had to rebuild and rebuy everything. <gasps> they took my Kirby! I was so mad about my Kirby. <laughs> it was brand new. I'd only had it like three weeks, you know? She was not happy about me buying it. It was one of those things where I had a knock on the door. I go to the door and it's a Kirby vacuum salesman. I let him in. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me the whole spiel, and I bought the darn thing. Eleven hundred dollars. Hello, in 1994, 95, 96, 97. I don't know. In, in the mid 90s, somewhere. <laughs> and she came home. And there's a brand new Kirby. There. It's like, what did you do? What is the matter with you? You know. But hey, I had this big martial arts school in. Uh, we had to vacuum it every day, and 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 that thing like it it vacuumed itself. I mean, it was self-propelled. You, you didn't even hear, have to really vacuum. It did the job for you. You know, it made my life a lot easier. <laughs> so when they when they broke in and stole my vacuum, uh, um, and then I got that notice from American Express saying, "Hey, if you purchased stuff on your American Express card, you got theft protection." But when I checked on it. They told me no, the statute of limitations had uh, had expired. Uh, it only was for a certain amount of time. And I heard the Holy Spirit talk to me and told me, had you known your benefits? And he showed me Psalm 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And it was a real important teaching time for me because he began to just go over and cover all the benefits that are available to the children of God that they don't know. And what did Jesus say? My people perish for lack of knowledge. It's the things that we don't know that destroy us. You know, there was a there was a, a man one time in our church that used to give this testimony about how how he um, he he died of a heart attack, but they resuscitated him. But while he was in that state, he was a believer. Jesus took him and, and he was going down this hallway. And I think I've told this story before. So those of you that have heard it already, you can just. But he was going down this hallway and there were these doors. And he had this unbelievable urge to see what was inside this door. And and he said he grabbed Jesus. He said he grabbed him by the whatever he was, the robe that he was wearing. He said, Jesus, what's in that door? And Jesus says, let's go. Let's just keep going. And he said, he said, and he began to turn. He, he pulled him again. He's like, no, 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 no. Show me. I want to know what's inside that door. He said, and Jesus opened the door. And it was all the blessings that God had provided for him that he didn't get to use because he didn't know. See, his doctrine, his religion didn't teach the gifts of the Holy Spirit didn't teach the authority and the power so he had lost a child when he was young to a sickness or a disease and 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 the healing was there he had gotten divorced and a nasty divorce to the love of his life the woman from his youth that he just regretted he he so regretted it and and the restoration was there and it was all these things that God had made a provision for him 
but he 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 didn't have them. He that you know they never came to fruition in his life because he didn't know it was what he didn't know. He didn't know that these benefits were available to him. He didn't know how to exercise them. He didn't know how to walk in them. And see, that's the whole point of this ministry, is to teach you everything that you are and the benefits that are that are at your disposal and and that the provision that your father had made for you. And one of them is this: Adonai bestows favor and honor. He wants to favor us. He wants us to be favored. Remember when Joseph was in when Joseph was in uh, taken as a prisoner, what happened to him? Immediately he rose to prominence. He had favor. The, the blessing of God was upon him so that everything he put his hands to prospered. And the Bible says, everything we put our hands to shall prosper. Why? It says, well, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become the curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, so that the blessings of Abraham may come upon those who are in Christ Jesus. Well, if we go back and say, that's what God showed me. I went back after I got that Psalm 103, the benefits of God. I started studying the benefits or the, 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 the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they're all of their those blessings are available to us. Why? Because of what Jesus did on the cross. Because he took the curse for us, so that the blessings of Abraham would come upon us. We have we're heirs to those. So this whole ministry is based upon maturing people in who they are and getting them to understand what their benefits are, what their privileges are, so that in maturity we can walk in blessings. But, but what's the whole point of blessings? Not so I go out and buy a Lamborghini and drive around in this brand new Lamborghini. I say that because my landlord just got a brand new Lamborghini yesterday. It was unbelievably gorgeous. He gets a brand new one every year. But that's not what it was intended to do. It, the blessing is intended for us to bless others. What does the Bible say? It says, give and it shall be given back to you. So we give to receive so we can hoard? No. So we can give some more. You know, God is looking for a giving heart. He's just looking for somebody he can use. Like I told you about that, that ministry in, in Reinhard Bonnke's Bank, ministry in Africa. The guy does crusades where 2.2 million people get saved. They'll have this stage with a 60 foot by 30 foot LCD monitor that's like a million dollar monitor, okay? And they'll have 400,000 people out in front of that, but then beyond that, like a football, two football fields away, they'll have another monitor, and another monitor, and another monitor, a million dollars, a million dollars, a million dollars, and there'll be a, 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 a two million people around that. I mean, he's preaching to four or five million people. Y'all understand what a million, look, we've been to, you've been to a big concert, uh, 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 some of those mega churches where they hold 20,000 people and you're looking around going, wow, this is awesome. Look at this. And people are praising God. They cut their hands up. You know, um, there's a really cool men's ministry. What is the name of it? I forget it. Anyways, it's just, it's really awesome. And you have 20,000 men in there just worshiping God. And it's awesome. It really is. But y'all, it's nothing like 2 million people. And then the local churches, they, 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 it's not like, okay, there was 2 million people that they, or, you know, let's say 3 million people showed up and they say two, 2 million people get saved. But the local churches, what they do is they connect with those people and they bring them in and they meet with them and, and they, they walk them through salvation so they make sure that they understand that it's, it's belief in Jesus, that he died on the cross, that he went into hell, that he took the keys, that he, that he rose again, and he's seated at the right hand of God, that he's laid the blood at the, at the, at the feet of the Father. And if you confess the, the Lord, it, Jesus is your Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. I mean, these, well, they, so that they understand that. And they have him fill out these cards. I mean, they interview them all. And, and it's like, and it's not uncommon for them to do two or three million people like that and none of that would have happened none of it 
if wealthy business people did not put up four or five million dollars. So while this is not a prosperity ministry, it's a maturity ministry, Father will use prosperity, will, will bless people and use that prosperity to preach the gospel. So the, the word I'm, I'm, I'm looking at today says, Adonai bestows favor and honor. He does this. And trust me, he's, he's going to bestow this favor upon us when we're mature enough to handle it. See, Joseph was mature. He was uncorruptible, incorruptible. He, he, when, when that guy's wife, what is it, uh, Potiphar? When his wife went to seduce him, Joseph ran out of there. He ran out of there. You know, I remember when I was, when I was being courted to do that, that job uh, with that woman, you know, I, I couldn't say no fast enough. I mean, I, I didn't even give it a thought. It wasn't like I thought, hmm, that might be interesting. I was just, no. No. <laughs> no. I'm not doing it. If she's involved, I'm not doing it. Because I didn't even want, you know, I, I said, I, I told you that I didn't want my wife to even wonder or have doubts. But I didn't want anybody else I was in a position of authority I didn't want anyone else thinking to themselves oh, I wonder if he's uh, fooling around with that girl you know I didn't want I didn't want the appearance of impropriety even the appearance and see that's what Joseph was he was such a mature believer that God could bless him everywhere he went everything he did God blessed him he blessed him so there's nothing wrong with being blessed. There's nothing wrong with prosperity. But like I always say, you take a hundred believers and 99 of them aren't mature enough to handle it. So to sit around and, 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 get, and do all these sermons and lessons about prosperity is a, is a deception. You know, the lesson should be about maturity. When you mature, the prosperity will come. You know, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Grow mature in the things of God and all the things the world is searching after. He will add unto you when you get to that place of maturity. So Adonai is looking to bestow favor and honor upon us. He is. But we've got to move ourselves into a position of maturity that we can handle it says he will not withhold anything good from us it is Adonai who shows favor and restores fortunes it is Adonai who restores who shows favor and restores our fortunes for those of you that have walked in a place of prosperity and lost it all and when you lost it all it caused you to turn back to God because I've heard a lot of testimonies I've heard a lot of people write into me and give me their testimony or tell me their story and you know and, and it's pretty similar that they were doing really well and they lost everything and when they lost everything they turned back to God which is you know that's what he's looking for. He's looking for that person. Well, he's saying here, that puts you in a place to confess this word over you. It says, it is Adonai who shows favor and restores fortunes. See, when you turn back to Adonai and you remember who you were, and you grow in him, and you mature in him, and you put yourself in a position where you can't be corrupted again because you remember what happened. You remember how, how those things led you away from your father so that you don't do it again. You know, you, when you read in the Old Testament, how many times do you read where, where, where you know, the Israelites 
are messed up. You know, and they cry out to God. They they get on their knees and they they cry out to their father and he hears them and he restores them and they go, do good for a generation or two and then all of a sudden they forget them and they turn away again. And it was a cycle that happened over and over and over. I mean, from, from the time they left Egypt until Jesus. It was just a continual thing. We got to learn from that. We have to learn from that. It says, He pardons all our sins and takes away all our guilt so that we can rejoice again. Now, these are this is out of Psalms. I'm, I'm quoting verses out of Psalms. Listen to that. He pardons all our sins and takes away all our guilt. See, He takes the guilt away. And, and anybody that is lived life and you've done stupid things you've made bad decisions and the decisions that you make may have hurt other people in your life because sin affects everybody around it around them i mean it does all right there's guilt there you know you're 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 saddened by what you did the bad decisions that you made and you see how it's affected people you know Sometimes as, as parents, parents make bad decisions and it, it affects their kids. You know, a husband that goes out and cheats on his wife and she divorces him. And uh, those kids get messed up. Sometimes, you know, they, maybe they turn into drugs or, or, or just they've made bad decisions. And a lot of it is because that family unit was broken up. All right. And, and, and you know, if that parent has a conscience at all, they'll look back on that and say, and I messed up. I messed up my kids. That was my fault. You know, there's guilt there. All right, well, what does it say here? It says, He pardons all our sins and takes away all our guilt so that we can rejoice again. See, that guilt separates you from your Father, and Satan will use it against you. And it, and it, it makes it difficult to rejoice, to praise the Lord. All right, it creates a separation that, that, it makes it difficult to rejoice. Well, he takes away the guilt so that we can rejoice again. That's an awesome thing. You know, that's a that's something you can stand on. Father, take this guilt from me so that I can rejoice again. He's so good. He's so faithful. Adonai will also restore our prosperity so that our land will once again yield harvest. Now, why would he restore our prosperity? so that our land could yield harvest so you could hoard it so that you could go and buy things and be led astray again no no so that you've come to a place of maturity where you realize that it was things that drew you away from your father and that won't happen again but this time you would use prosperity to bless the body of Christ to 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 stay in, in prayer with your father of, hey, what do you want me to do with this, this blessing? Who do you want me to bless with it? Where do you want me to sow it? What ministry can I give to? You know, there's people out there doing missions all over the world. My daughter went to um, El Salvador last year. And they raised money. It was $2,400 she had to raise. And there was, I want to say, 20 of them that went down there. And they dug a well, a professional, a really nice well. Those people, there was only 100 people in the village. The village had been there for hundreds of years, but there were only 100 people. It couldn't grow. Why? Because they had no clean water. You know, water is like life. You know, the unsanitary conditions and, you know, the water being filthy made everybody sick all the time. You'd have babies dying of dysteria and or, I don't know what it is, what, but because they're just, they're always sick. You know, you've been to Mexico and drink the water, man, you get sicker than a dog. You're like, you're going to die. I, I drank water in Mexico one time, came back for 10 days. I couldn't get off the couch. I thought I was going to die. I literally thought I was going to die. So when they did that, those people had water and that water changed their life for the first time they had fresh clean water everybody in the village could go and and fill their jugs with clean water not muddy gross 
you know, water with fecal matter in it because they're pooping where they're drinking. And, you know, they didn't have anything else. There was nothing else for them to do. Man, what a ministry that would be. You know, somebody to, 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 to go and pay for wells to be dug all over the place so that these people could... And, and i got to tell you, me and my wife or my, my daughter tells the story of these people, when they got water, they wanted to hear the gospel. They, anybody that was willing to come down there and bless them with that, they wanted to hear it. They all got saved. She said they all got saved. They all were on fire for the Lord Jesus. See, these are the things, these are the reasons that God wants to bless us. He needs this stuff. He, he wants to reach these people. It's not for us to buy mansions and Ferraris and Lamborghinis. It's for us to give. But it takes a mature person to do that. It takes a mature person to be able to make a million dollars, not leave his little 2,500 square foot home and use that money to bless people to bless ministries, to find missions and, and give into those people and, and, and bless them. Or you could go out and buy a half million dollar home with a big mortgage note and, and, a, and a Porsche. You, you know, you could do that with your money. Or you could give it away. You know, what did Jesus say to the rich run, young ruler? Give away everything you have and follow me. He went away sad because he couldn't do it the problem with money it's a hook so it says here Adonai will restore our prosperity what does the word restore mean it means to restore or replace it so this is for a person that once walked in prosperity and lost it he lost it but he's learned his lesson now David's saying hey if you if you learned your lesson this is a word you can sow Adonai Restore my prosperity. He will. It says Adonai will restore our prosperity so that our land will once again yield harvest. You got a business? So that your business will once again prosper. This is a promise. Adonai is kind, merciful, and full of grace to all who call on him. He is kind. He is merciful and he is full of grace to all who call on him. And remember, those who show kindness, who show mercy, and who show grace, receive kindness, mercy, and grace. For God will not be mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you reap. So if you want people to show you kindness, if you want people to show you mercy, if you want people to, to give you grace, you have to give it too. You have to be a person of kindness, of mercy and grace. And your Father will lavish those things upon you. See, this is all about maturity, y'all. You can't be a jerk who's mean and and um, ruthless and and selfish and sit around and quote this verse, Adonai bestows, is merciful and full of grace to me, and expect your Father to have mercy on you and be gracious towards you. It doesn't work like that. God will not be mocked. For whatever man sows, that shall he reap. This is a benefit to you when you have that type of attitude towards people. If you are gracious, if you are merciful, if you are kind towards people, you can quote this verse and call in grace and mercy and kindness. This is maturity, y'all. This is maturity, not a prosperity teaching. It's a maturity teaching. It says, In the day of trouble, call on Adonai, and he will answer you. He helps and comforts all who call on him. He says, come singing and praising back to Adonai and he will pour everlasting joy on your head. Man, I don't know about you, but that's an awesome verse right there. Let's, let's go over that one again. It says, come singing and praising back to Adonai. Come 
back to Adonai. When you come back to Adonai, so those of you that maybe drifted away or felt yourself getting drawn away, because it happens, people were in the world, you know, we live in this world and we get busy and we get, you know, it happens to everybody. You get busy doing stuff. Life happens. You got a family. You got a husband or a wife. You got a business. You know, you got friends. You got people tugging at your time. And then you realize, oh, I haven't spent time with my father. Or maybe you went through a period in your life where you were, you were estranged from your father. Not that you ever stopped believing in him or loving him or calling him your father, but you just didn't give him you didn't dedicate your time you weren't reading you weren't in prayer like you used to be he says come singing and praising back to Adonai and what will he do see this is a promise this is the benefit of God it says and he will pour everlasting joy on your heads man I don't know about you but I gotta tell you if the father pours joy on your head it's gonna be good it's going to be really good. And what do you do? Here's a maturity lesson. What do you do when your father pours everlasting joy on your head? You start pouring it on other people. You start pouring it on other people. I was um, asked to go and I was telling you about a church that I was in that was filled with the Holy Spirit. But the elders there, they um, they were jealous of my wife and I, and they, they were miserable towards us and made us go sit up in the rafters. Um, one day the pastor asked me to open up the service in prayer. And as I was praying, um, I saw this vision of them. And uh, is they are Tommy and Rachel Birchfield. And I just love Tommy Birchfield. I mean, he's... He's awesome. He's an awesome man of God. And, uh, you know, I, Rachel's awesome, too. She's a really good Bible teacher. But my connection is with Tommy. I, I, Tommy and I, you know, our spirit's really connected. And I saw Tommy as a pitcher. Like a pitcher that where you, like, fill it with water and you pour it into other glasses. And, and Rachel, like this big plate or saucer... And the pitcher had all these cracks in it, and so did the saucer. And the cracks were were life's lessons, things that they had gone through, things that they had endured, and trials. But, you know, not like bad or evil stuff, but just stuff that happened to them that were like cracks of character. Stuff that they'd endured that became life's lessons. So as the Holy Spirit was pouring the water into, into the pitcher, Tommy, the water was gushing out of the cracks into the plate, which was Rachel, because she supported Tommy and all that he did. And the cracks in the plate, the water escaped from there, and it poured out over, over the table, which, which filled up all these cups, which were all the people. And it was really kind of neat. It was really kind of cool how, how the Lord showed me that, gave me that revelation of, of their ministry. And it was so true. They have one of the, one of the, they, they have this thing called the country camp where, where, where you know, 30,000 kids come there during the summer. 30,000, y'all. They have like 2,200 kids every week throughout the entire summer. And, and they, get them saved they're filled with the holy spirit i mean these this place is awesome these people are so anointed i gotta tell you and i don't even know why i was going there let me see maybe i can figure it out i don't know but all i know is uh there was there i maybe i can figure it out hold on oh yeah i get it because one of the things i saw being poured into him was joy Tommy was so full of joy and everywhere he went he gushed out joy on people and it was hard not to be full of joy around Tommy Birchfield I mean he he was just he's like the biggest coolest sweetest teddy bear in the world I mean he's just awesome just really an awesome guy and um let me see oh, what's the next one 
Oh, and it's a continuation of this. So it's like this. It goes, Come singing and praising back to Adonai, and he will pour everlasting joy on your head. And then it goes on to say, For sorrow and sighing will flee. For it is I, Yahweh, who will comfort you. He says, Remember Yahweh and all the mighty works he has done in you and through you. Put your trust in Adonai, for his arm is not too short to move, nor is he too weak to save. Man, I just love that. The arm of the Lord is not too short to move mightily, y'all, nor is he too weak to save. So, this is a lesson of maturity. This is a ministry of maturity so that we can get to a place where I can teach the next thing I want to teach you, which is, it's, it's, it's like a Gatling gun. It's like a bazooka. It is like a weapon that is bigger and badder than anything we got. But in order to use this weapon, we have to be of maturity. We have to be of maturity. So I'm hoping it's going to be tomorrow. And um, I just wanted to say that I love you guys. Uh, I want to tell a funny story. Um, I used to, well, when I was 12, and I don't know if I've told this story, if I have. Yeah, I've done so many videos and I've told so many stories. I can't remember if, if I've told them or not told them or thought about telling them but didn't tell them. Anyways, when I was 12 years old, my father got me a job at uh, one of his uh, at his friend's restaurant at the time I didn't know it but it was the finest Italian restaurant in the city I didn't know that had these two little old Italian ladies from Italy who were the main cooks it was all their recipes and then this American Indian his name was Wayne he was like the short order cook chef you know he was fast and he was good he would come in the night they would they would make the sauce and they would make handmade all the pasta the linguine the fettuccine the raviolis everything they breaded the veal and did uh, did prepped everything and then he came in and he put it all together and just cooked all the dishes but they did all the work so um i was a dishwasher i was 12 years old and from the time i got the job there as soon as i figured out my job which hello was in one day <laughs> I figured out how to wash dishes in one day when it was slow I would go back there and you know Wayne was once he got to know me he liked me I'm, I'm a likable person I, I expressed interest in learning how to cook so he started teaching me how to cook I can cook anything you know um, it's funny I was talking to my son last night and he said he said he said dad you're you're, you're just the, you're the best cook that I've that I've ever had. And I was like, oh, please, are you kidding me? He said, no, realize. He, he, he goes, no, no, no. Think about it. Houston is always, if you, if you look at any of the travel magazines, Houston is number one for cuisine, for variety and quality cuisine. It is. Houston always wins number one. And um, he said, and we'd go out to dinner. He goes, and we'd go out to, you know, there, there was a time when my wife and I were really prospering. We could go anywhere we wanted. We could go to any restaurant we wanted. And we could pretty much eat whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted to eat it. You know, didn't, there was no, money was not an issue for us. And, um, and he goes, and we'd go out to these fancy restaurants. And he goes, and I'd be eating this, you know, $30, $40 meal, thinking to myself, this is crap. The food that we eat at home is better. He goes, Dad, you are always better than any, than any of those restaurants. And I was like, hmm, I never thought about that. I can really, I can cook. I should be 400 pounds. I really actually can, can cook pretty good. So, um, so, and it was because of everything that Wayne taught me. He taught me how to make everything. And during the summers, I used to come in uh, with the little old Italian ladies and learn the recipes. So I didn't just learn how to cook like short order cook chef type thing, I actually learned how to make, you know, all the sauces and, and make all the stuff from scratch. So I learned both ends of it. And um, <laughs> one day, Dominic, uh, the, he was the owner, he asked me if I wanted to go cook for a party. He was going to cater a party. Okay, fine. So we get there and he says, uh, you're doing strip steaks. Now, 
I had just started cooking and the way it went was like this. One day, Wayne, who was an American Indian and he was also an alcoholic, he didn't show up to work. And um, I was only 14, so it was about two years into it. And uh, I was doing dishes and he goes back there to cook because an order came up, it was early, it was only like five o'clock, but people were just starting to come in. And he goes, darn, salt and baco. I don't know how to make salt and baco. And I looked at him, I said, I do. And he goes, you do? Show me. So I went back there and I whipped it up for him. I did up, it was a table of three. Everybody had something different. I did the whole thing, put it up on the thing, rang the little bell for the, for the waitress. And he goes, he goes, what do you know how to cook? I said, pretty much everything. He goes, you can cook everything on the menu? And I said, yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah. He goes, all right, all right, you cook and I'll wash dishes because it was just him and I. So I learned, I started cooking that night for him. So he invited, he asked me to go do this party with him. And I didn't start cooking every night. Uh, uh, one of the Italian ladies came in and she started working evenings. And I had a couple of the weeknights that I could, you know, from school. I was uh, uh, doing Taekwondo by then. So a couple of nights I didn't do class. I was going and cooking. And um, I saw so I go to cater this party with him. And I have never, I've looked, I'm 14 years old. I cooked there, but everything was controlled in a controlled environment. Now he wants me to cook 50 steaks on a barbecue grill outside. So we get the coals all going and it was this huge grill. It was like five feet long and about three feet deep. And I had 42 or 43 steaks on there. Now, what happens when you put 40 steaks on a grill and the fat starts dripping off? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now you gotta understand, I've never done this before. I don't know, all of a sudden, this flame's getting higher, and it's higher, and it's getting higher, and it's going up, It's the, the steaks are engulfed in flames, and I got my arm in the fire trying to turn these steaks, freaking out, because I don't know what to do, I don't know, and, and the, <laughs> the steaks are burning, they're burning, and I'm freaking out, I don't know what to do, because I'm 14, and I'm too embarrassed to go say anything to Dominic, I, I, I'm just trying to turn these steaks and keep them cycled over and he comes out and he's like what are you doing and he grabs some water and he put it on the coals and he knocks the fire down because i didn't think of doing that oh man i messed up that whole thing i burned all those steaks every single oh he was so mad at me oh he was so mad at me but hey, it was his fault. Who, put us a, who puts a 14 year old kid in charge of 50 steaks at a big fancy banquet? Who would do that and not tell him anything? Uh, good times, good times. So needless to say, I burned 40 steaks and one guy came outside, he goes, that was the best steak I ever had. <laughs> Apparently he liked his steaks. Burned on the outside, raw on the inside, because that's what it was like. Hey, you guys, I'm at 48 minutes. Uh, been a while since I did a video. I guess I had some stuff to say today. Wait till you hear the next lesson. It's going to blow you away. I'll talk to you later. Bye.